Hi guys. We are in the state of Washington. It's 8 o'clock and it's a beautiful morning, good temperature, no clouds. If you remember, in the last episode, we used the airport where we are right now, Swanson, to fly over Mount Rainier. Today, we will departure to Vernonia, making a tour over two more volcanoes, Mount St. Helens and Mount Adams. Okay. Let's start with the procedures. First of all, doors closed and secured. There we go. Now comes up mixture rich. Open both fuel tanks. Battery comes on. Fuel pump on. Okay. Enough. Cowl flaps open wide. And power about 25%. There we go. Okay. Avionics on. We will use the GPS for this flight, but it's easy to flight it without instruments, cause we want overflight two prominent mountains into the scenery. Later we will need the GPS for locate the correct course to Vernonia. Let's see, all gauges in green. Pressures OK. Fuel OK. GPS ready. Flaps 10 degrees. Taxi light on. Cessna Skylane Victor Hotel Delta Lima Lima, Swanson, taxiing to the runway 16 for departure. Parking brakes off. Okay. Now we gonna check the magnetos. Right mag. Okay. Left mag okay. Propeller. Okay.
strobe and landing lights on. Skylane Victor Hotel Delta Lima Lima entering runway 16 for departure. Flaps up. Skylane Victor Hotel Delta Lima Lima, runway free, heading west. First goal is over flight the Mount St. Helens, so, when we have reached to our flight level and we can overcome the surrounding mountains we will fly directly to that volcano. Look at the GPS screen, you can see we are surrounded of red color. That means we have mountains above our plane. So, we need overcome the summits before take our course. And this is the reason because Swanson Airport has a right pattern for landings and departures. With a left pattern, the planes would crash against mountains. I say it to the people who don't know this detail. Also I have to say that isn't the first time I fly to Mount St. Helens. Few months ago I made a tour around that volcano, in that occasion we departed from the Walter Sutton Strip. If you want take a look to this video, you can do it through this link. In any way, in this video I will give you a deepest explanation about that volcano. At least that's I hope so. The Mount Rainier If you pay attention to the horizon, you will can see the volcanoes where we go. On the right you can see more clearly Mount St. Helens, and on its left, farther, Mount Adams.
Now we're over flying the Rift Lake. Rift Lake is a 23.5 miles, 38 kilometers, long reservoir on the Cowlitz River. Fishing in Rift Lake can be very good. Species include rainbow and brown trout, landlocked coho, base both largemouth and smallmouth, bluegill, crappie, and perch. So, you know, if you like fishing, you must visit the lake. Now that we are approaching the volcano, I will take the opportunity to show you footage of the eruption that took place on May 18, 1980. May 18, 1980, the volcano blew its top. Como Force Bob Thronson says Crockett was an eyewitness to what he called hell on earth. On that Sunday morning, this was the mountain Dave Crockett came to photograph. It is 8.32 a.m. I knew I had to get out of there. I started down the valley, look at my rear view mirror, and there's just a wall of debris, mud, steam, rocks, boulders, and full-size trees just rolling along. The whole valley's disappearing behind me. Came down here. Ended up right here. I was right about here. The whole, uh, this whole little area here just disappeared in front of me completely. Just a big explosion of mud and trees. Uh, and I was there, just walking that ridge where I had a view just over the trees of the mountain, and I could see what was happening. I opened the door and the alarm started going off, but it was kind of the least of my concerns at that point. The ground is moving, I could feel the earthquakes. The wind is being sucked up towards the mountain, towards the blast. By this time you can hear the mountain rumbling. Constant rumbling, grinding, growling sound. Uh... I had this huge cloud of material with lightning and blue and purple colors, um, rumbling, you see lightning hitting the ground. Um, I had to get away from that. Well, now the person who doesn't know the story, already knows it a little. If you look at the crater, you will see that it collapsed due to the great blast of the beginning of the eruption of the year 1980. We are just approaching the hillside that blowed up and that we have seen in the footage of the eruption. Mount St. Helens takes its English name from the British diplomat Lord St. Helens, a friend of explorer George Vancouver, who made a survey of the area in the late 18th century. The volcano is located in the Cascade Range, and is part of the Cascade Volcanic Arc, a segment of the Pacific Ring of Fire that includes over 160 active volcanoes. This volcano is well known for its ash explosions and pyroclastic flows. Mount St. Helens is the deadliest and most economically destructive volcanic event in the history of the United States. 57 people were killed, 250 homes, 47 bridges, 15 miles, 24 kilometers, of railways, and 185 miles, 298 kilometers, of highway were destroyed. 
a massive debris avalanche triggered by an earthquake measuring 5.1 on the Richter scale, caused an eruption that reduced the elevation of the mountain summit from 9,677 feet (2,950 meters) to 8,363 feet (2,549 meters), leaving a 1 mile (1.6 kilometers) wide horseshoe-shaped crater. As you can see the debris avalanche was up to 0.7 cubic miles, 2.9 cubic kilometers, in volume. As with most other volcanoes in the Cascade Range, Mount St. Helens is a large eruptive cone consisting of lava rock interlayered with ash, pumice, and other deposits. The mountain includes layers of basalt and andesite through which several domes of dacite lava have erupted. The largest of the Dacite domes formed the previous summit, and off its northern flank sat the smaller Goat Rocks Dome. Both were destroyed in the 1980 eruption. Mount St. Helens is 34 miles 55 kilometers, west of Mount Adams, our other goal, in the western part of the Cascade Range. These sister and brother volcanic mountains are approximately 50 miles 80 kilometers, from Mount Rainier, the highest of Cascade volcanoes. Mount Hood, the nearest major volcanic peak in Oregon, is 60 miles 100 kilometers, southeast of Mount St. Helens. During the winter of 1980-1981, a new glacier appeared. Now officially named Crater Glacier, it was formerly known as the Tolutsan Glacier. Shadowed by the crater walls and fed by heavy snowfall and repeated snow avalanches, it grew rapidly, 14 feet 4 .3 meters, per year in thickness. Now I leave you a few moments with music and the volcano. Enjoy! inside the Mount Adams. Our last goal. Due its superior altitude we must increase the power and ascend till the flight level of almost the ceiling of this plane, 14,000 feet. Mount Adams, known by some Native American tribes as Pato or Klickitat, is a potentially active stratovolcano. Although Adams has not erupted in more than 1,000 years, it is not considered extinct. It is the second highest mountain in the state of Washington, after Mount Rainier. Mount Adams stands 37 miles, 60 kilometers, east of Mount St. Helens and about 50 miles, 80 kilometers, south of Mount Rainier. It is 30 miles, 
48 km, north of the Columbia River and 55 miles, 89 km, north of Mount Hood in Oregon. The nearest major cities are Yakima, 50 miles, 80 km, to the northeast, and the Portland metropolitan area, 60 miles, 97 km, to the southwest. Between half and two-thirds of Adams is within the Mount Adams Wilderness of the Gifford Pinchot National Forest. The remaining area is within the Mount Adams Recreation Area of the Yakama Indian Reservation. While many of the volcanic peaks in Oregon are located on the Cascade Crest, Adams is the only active volcano in Washington to do so. It is further east than all the rest of Washington's volcanoes except Glacier Peak. Its size and distance from major cities, and the tendency of some people to forget or ignore Mount Adams, has led some people to call this volcano the Forgotten Giant of Washington. I hope the giant stays asleep forever. After our visit at this last volcano, now we have to go to Vernonia to finish our today's stage. Vernonia, Cessna Skylane Victor Hotel Delta Lima Lima in final, runway 27. Autopilot off. Vernonia is a city in Columbia County. Oregon. It is located on the Nehalem River, in a valley on the eastern side of the northern Oregon Coast Range that is the heart of one of the most important timber producing areas of the state. Logging has played a large role in the history of the city. The population was 2,151 at the 2010 census. Taz not available. The community was first settled in 1874 by the Parker and Van Blaricom families. Vernonia started to become more than an isolated farming community on July 10, 1924, when the Oregon American Lumber Company opened a state-of-the-art lumber mill, which was supported by a railroad line connecting Vernonia to the rest of the country. Taz available. Another point of flaps down. Okay, touchdown. 
This runway is a pretty bumpy, in FSX, and it has a hill that makes the landing a little complicated. Flaps up, and gonna make a back track. We are arriving to the end of this stage. I hope that now we know a little more about the volcanoes of the state of Washington. In any case I don't want fill the people's head and mind with amounts of data. Only just to satisfy the curiosity. Okay. I'll park right there. That's all folks. I hope you liked this stage. I wait you in the next video.